Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my review of Season 1, Episode 10 of uh, Star Trek Discovery. So I finally caught up to Season 2. They just put out uh, Episode 10 last night, so I'm on Episode 10 of uh, Season 1. And uh, one thing I have to say right at the beginning is uh, a friend asked me about this. He goes, are you pretending to like uh, Star Trek Discovery to get hate clicks? And I was like, no, 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 I actually like it. I didn't think I was going to like it. I thought it was going to be real SJW and, and just dumb, and I like it a lot. And I think I finally figured out why I like it. So I've talked in many of the videos where I say I've just got kind of a neutral opinion on the Star Trek franchise. There are things I've liked a lot like TNG and uh, Deep Space Nine and Star Trek Into Darkness and there are things I really didn't like, like uh, uh, Voyager and uh, Star Trek Beyond and, you know, half of the original cast uh, versions of the, uh, the, you know, the first movies. I really like Star Trek The uh, Motion Picture. I need to watch that again. But I was uh, getting towards the end of this video. Oh, and by the way, the, the other thing about Star Trek Discovery is it's making me do something I never do, which I'm kind of binging. I can never binge. I can never watch a whole season in a day. I have no idea how people do that. Um, but usually even when I like a show, uh, like Daredevil, you know, what are those, like 13 episode seasons? I'll watch like one a day for four days, skip a couple days, watch one, skip a day. It usually takes me like two or three weeks even to watch a Netflix season that I like. Uh, but this one I've actually been accelerating. I went from, you know, doing a couple days between episodes to I finished one yesterday and I like two hours late. I tried to watch Death Wish by with uh, uh, Bruce Willis. And all I just kept thinking about is like, I wonder what happens in the mirror universe. <laughs> and so I just went back. So this one is uh, episode 10. It's when they came back from their mid-season break. So it was January of 2018 and uh, it had been off for uh, two months. They had just... So this is them in the mirror universe. They uh, jumped using the spore drive over there. They got tricked by Lorca. By the way, it looks like I was wrong about Lorca. I mean, I was wrong like I misremembered or misunderstood. I read a couple Wikipedia, you know, summaries of season one. And I thought Lorca was a villain. But it looks more like Lorca is an anti-hero. It looks like he was in the resistance uh, against the Terran Empire in the mirror universe. I always thought that his storyline was he was, you know, a bad guy from the Terran Empire and he was trying to steal the spore drive or something. Um, so I actually really like that because I've really, really grown to like Lorca. For some reason, also, I didn't really get invested in him because I thought he was one of the characters who dies in the middle of the... Like I said, I would just read these little summaries and, and guess a lot. So I thought he, I thought he was going to die, like, in the middle of the season. But he's, like, you know... He's still going in, in uh, season 10. Now, Dr. Hugh Culber did die. And I've got to say, like, I still I still disagree with pretty much everything I've read about this. They said that, you know, Hugh Culber was just like a token character. And he, he had a lot of personality through all of this. You know, he was like, challenging Lorca. And he, had, he was really, really good. They had him in just the right amount. So in this one, he gets... In, in this one, they have a couple of things. Number one, the... Um, Laurel um, is uh, she was uh, captured last time, so she's doing little Manchurian candidate um, phrases and, and uh, to make the Voke aspect of Ash Tyler come to the um, front of his brain. Although technically it was always in the front, they actually talk about that. They they did searches for um, hidden engrams, but then they found out this was not hidden deep inside, but it was actually on top. I don't really know what that means, but it's a nice little analogy. Um, but uh, so getting back to the thing where I finally figured out what I liked is I realized this isn't Star Trek. Yeah, I know. I know. Lots of people say this isn't Star Trek and that Orville is really Star Trek. By the way, I'm I don't know why I just I'm, I, I refuse to pay for more than three premium services. I won't pay for Netflix, Amazon Prime Video and Hulu. People are saying, watch Orville, watch Orville. I go, OK, I can't find it on Netflix or Amazon Prime Video. They go, oh, it's on Hulu. I go, yeah, I'm not I'm not doing that. No. No, you could just need, you need to come on to one of the other two premium when when Disney starts putting all the Marvel stuff on their Disney whatever channel they call it. Bye bye Marvel. I'll see you in the theaters or not at all. I'm not gonna go chase you down for a third uh, premium series. But anyway, speaking of Marvel, what I realized about this is this isn't Star Trek. 
It's not even sci-fi. It's a Marvel superhero comic. More specifically, it is a Chris Claremont written X-Men comic from the 80s. So um, if you're only familiarity of... Um, well, actually, I guess the later movies get into this. But, you know, X-Men, people think about it. They're like, oh, X-Men, the mutants are discriminated against and all this stuff. But when I was reading X-Men in the late 80s and early 90s, it was an everything in the kitchen sink uh, franchise. It had time travel. It had space adventures. It had vampire stuff. It had cyborg stuff. It had spy stuff. It had superhero. It had you know, social commentary, it had everything. But mainly what it was, was, you know, most superheroes. Because I kept noticing, I go, there's a lot of soap opera in this. And there's a lot of just like, it's not even really sci-fi. It's more adventure. We have to sneak into the thing to grab this before X happens. That's not sci-fi. That's adventure and suspense. And so, so I started going, hmm, adventure plus soap opera. What does... Why does that remind me of something I'm very... Comic books, specifically American superhero comic books, specifically Marvel comic books. They are literally soap operas with action scenes. So that's what this is. And by the way, I feel like they're doing good in like all of the little romance, uh, you know, uh, Ash Tyler and Michael Burnham has, you know, grown very naturally and it's been good. Even just little one-offs like uh, Lorca and Admiral Cornwell, that was interesting and um uh i think stamets 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 and culber already knew each other and so they didn't meet yeah but that one's been very good and these are very like compelling storylines with the soap opera aspect and then the adventure is just cool there's a lot of like hey we're in the mirror universe we have to pretend that we're part of the terran empire so they like uh you know refit the um the ship they change their uniforms by the way, the, the Mirror Universe uniforms are so cool. They are so action figure Like, when you put them on, the uh, the officers, they get this. The higher your rank, the more armor you're allowed. Because, you know, they're kind of like Klingons. They're always, like, killing each other to advance in ranks. Um, but, like, it's literally, like, fitted like a superhero costume. And there's even a cool bit where, you know, uh, uh, there's a cool elevator fight. I go, oh, yeah, this is just, this is a superhero story it's a it's a, it's x-men you know it's x-men because one of the things i liked about claremont x-men uh x-men stories is he wouldn't just like dip in you know he wouldn't just say hey like oh we went to asgard and we had one adventure for one issue when we went back it would be like a whole mini series like a four issue mini series where they go to asgard and then when you got back from asgard like stuff had changed that adventure had actually mattered it wasn't just a one-off which is how things typically would be. You know what I mean? Batman would travel with Superman to Krypton before it exploded, but it was just like a one-off. They would just go track down, oh, the Joker's over here and he's doing something. But they actually kind of, he would do these, all these different storylines and they'd go to space and it would be like a whole good space adventure that would last for like six issues. So that's what this is. So um, they... Uh, there's a lot of cool bits where, you know, like Tilly uh, in the Mirror Universe, Tilly is a captain. So um, Tilly has to pretend to be this real hard ass captain whose nickname is Killy because she's so violent. And that's fun and funny. And they're doing lots of cool little bits. I got to tell Ash Tyler to me is like the secret hit of season one. Now he's in season two. And so like he's OK, but he's kind of just kind of like this broken guy who's working for section 31 and he just has he's just kind of like forced to do a lot of stuff and the thing with him and michael is over although i'm not really sure why i guess because he killed ash tyler or he killed hugh culber but um michael burnham like started a war that's killed like tens of thousands of people so i think they'd be able to get past it um but uh it's just really, really cool. They're doing this stuff where, you know, Lorca, he has to pretend to be a prisoner of war. And he gets in this he gets put in this uh, chamber called the Agonizer and they shoot you with electricity. And I was like, this is like something out of a Jack Kirby comic or a, a Judge Dredd comic. Like, this isn't Star Trek. This is superhero. This is comic book. So I really, really got into that. So like I said, Ash Tyler, he's he's realizing that something happened to him. Although I still. OK, here's the other deal about this. So I read the whole Vogue Ash Tyler storyline on Wikipedia, and it made no sense. I read it like three times, and it still made no sense. Um, I was like, why don't you just brainwash 
a human instead of transforming a Klingon and putting different consciousness or whatever. Um, and I'm, maybe I got that stuff wrong. I got the thing with Lorca wrong. Um, but it's a really, really good storyline. So, yeah, so he's coming out and he actually kills Culber right before they go to the Mirror Universe. Um, so now they're trying to get some, actually forget, some information off the Defiant memory banks and, or not the Defiant, the Shenzhou. Or was it Defiant? One of them. Anyway, uh, the, uh, uh, cause Burnham is the commander over there. And they did, they did some good bits with the, I mean, at the very end, the, like one of the last shots is, uh, Burnham is in the, uh, what do you call it? What is it called? Command deck? Whatever it's called. Um, and she sits down in the, uh, uh, chair and she's like, uh, all the people that are like, uh, uh, hail Captain Burnham, hail the Terran Empire. And then she puts up their little, her little salute and says, you know, hail the Terran Empire. I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> this, this, so many things have happened in this season. It's insane. And it's just, it's totally a Chris Claremont X-Men storyline. You know, Storm is, you know, uh, the new uh, Thor. They actually did that way back in the day. Um, something like that just like all right fine I'm totally down with this this is not sci-fi there was no sci-fi elements in this entire episode I think the last two episodes have been nothing but plot shenanigans and adventure and soap opera so yeah I under if you're if you're angry because you say this isn't Star Trek I understand if you say I, you're angry because this isn't sci-fi I understand um, but if you like superhero comics I think you would like this so uh, anyway thanks for watching uh, subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed. Wait, that's the stuff I say on my other channel. I just usually just say like, yeah, so my next thing I'm going to review is season two, episode 10, <laughs> which I'm probably going to watch tonight. Thanks for watching. Bye.